Today I'm reviewing slash critiquing five iOS developer portfolios to hopefully give you some inspiration, some ideas, you know, some what to do, some what not to do for your own portfolio or iOS developer website. And if you don't have one of these yet, check out today's sponsor, Squarespace. It's a great way to get your portfolio or an app website up and running very quickly. First up, we have Chris Tapps Grinberg's uh, iOS and Apple technology developer, startup founder, conference speaker. Short, to the point, I learn a lot about him, see the picture, great. If you've seen these before, you may know that I usually harp on spending the whole you know, first page on just that, but I just have my screen blown up so you guys can see it better. Normally when I'm viewing this, it's like this, so it only takes up like the top third. So really like how uh, he kept that short and to the point. And if we scroll down, we can see uh, more about him with this about you blurb. Uh, you know, he's a founder of this startup here, uh, Qminder. We get a nice quick little blurb about what Qminder does, and we see the Apple TV frames here that displays it in a nice manner. We get the iPad version, quick blurb, there you go. This is what I like. I'm getting quick blurbs, and I get to see a bunch of screenshots, right? Quick blurb, screenshots. Quick blurb, screenshots, right? I don't have to like dig and navigate around his website to find this. He's giving me all the information up front in a fast and easy manner. And that's kind of a big point I wanna express here is I think a lot of times when people go with portfolio, they think artsy, big flashy, looks beautiful, so much design. And that's cool, but like oftentimes delivering the information directly, concise, all up front is the way to go. And another thing I like about Chris Tapp's website is I get to just learn more about him, right? I can see the blog. And again, you don't have to have a blog to be a great developer, but it doesn't hurt because it showcases how, how well you communicate these ideas. Right, so I can look at this blog, I can see he's done a ton of them. Uh, I can see the topics he's looking at, right? Like Matt View and Swift UI. Maybe I'll read a blog post. Uh, I can see how he presents his ideas, how he communicates. And again, this is all good stuff. And I know it may seem like I'm just making surface level judgments right now, but that's kind of what a portfolio is. I've said this time and time again, the purpose of the portfolio is to earn the deeper look, right? You wanna get that phone call, you wanna get that interview. That's the purpose of the portfolio. So Chris Tapps is doing a great job showcasing how he communicates. And then if you wanna learn how he communicates even more, he has all his talks, right? Because he speaks at conferences. And I know not everybody's gonna have this. In fact, probably very few people are going to have this. But if you do, this is even better because people can watch a YouTube video of you talking about programming, you showcasing your work, or you talking about a topic. Like that's like, that's almost like doing an interview like without doing an interview, kind of. So if you have anything like that, great way to share that. So overall, a great website from Chris Tapps here. Again, the information, direct, to the point, no frills. Next up, we have Toggle here and um, that fireworks of apps. So I'm gonna apologize in advance, Toggle. I hope this doesn't come off as too harsh, but uh, I want this to be a learning experience for, for everyone involved. And keep in mind, this is just my opinion, right? If you love this stuff, keep it. Don't, don't, don't do what I say. But I feel like this is too much. Um, you know, I prefer just more subtle things in, I wanna talk about like design, UI, animations at the expense of user experience. And I dealt with this as a junior developer all the time. And the reason that I think this is a big deal is because you're advertising yourself as a developer. So when I see this, I think you're the type of developer that goes for animations, cool design over a good user experience. Now, a good user experience, let's go back to Chris Tapps, right? I got everything I needed fast, easy, direct, to the point, like me as the user of like trying to learn about Chris Tapps, he made it very fast and easy for me and nice to use. This I feel like is just distractions, frills. Um, and again, that's important because if I'm hiring a developer, I want the developer that's gonna deliver the great UX and not get distracted with like animations. And I could be completely wrong. I know I'm making a surface level judgment, but that's the whole point. People are going to make surface level judgments by looking at your work and how you present it. So keep that in mind when you're presenting your work. And I understand just bashing this animation it may seem like I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. It's not that big of a deal, but I don't know, I, I do. I think it is. I think I would, if I'm hiring a developer, being a developer myself and experienced, I would, I would skim over this. I'd be like, no, okay, next. Um, so I don't want that to happen to you, Toggle. So I'm kind of hoping to help you out here. And the other thing I wanna point out is I didn't, like, what, who is Toggle? What is Toggle? I had to scroll down pretty far, like, okay, contributors, and you have some names here. So, okay, I'm, I, I think I kind of get what's going on here, but not till down here do I realize, oh, a team of three. Okay, so this is like a, a development team or maybe an agency or something like that. Like that should be, instead of this fireworks of apps, like I should learn about you. Again, back to kind of like Chris Tapps, I'm not saying to copy this exactly, but okay, I see who Chris Tapps is. I know Apple developer, startup founder, conference speaker, done, right? Toggle, again, you're, you're making it harder for me. 
So again, apologies if that came off harsh and maybe it's just my preference. I don't know. I'm happy to discuss this in the comments. I don't claim to be like the expert, right? But I just prefer the simple, clean, concise user experience uh, rather than all, all the frills. And I'll give you a little sneak peek of the next one of how like clean, nice it is, right? You get a completely different feeling uh, than you do here. More on Max in a second, but a lot of times when you do something like this, you know, like I have to, you know, I have my uh, browser zoomed out sometimes, like the animation doesn't like look great or if I'm zoomed in, the animation doesn't look great. Uh, I actually did test this on a phone and it does work on a phone, but when I scroll my browser like this, I don't know, that's kind of not looking great. So maybe you have some responsiveness to do. So I guess my point is also, not only is the simpler version, the better UX, but it's less overhead on the developers a lot of time too. And that development overhead brings me to today's sponsor, Squarespace. I know as developers, we wanna build our own websites, but as I kind of displayed uh, here in the toggle thing, Making it work great on all browsers, all screen sizes, all devices, like that's a headache. And I don't know about you, like I wanna build apps. I don't wanna spend all my time futzing around with my website, trying to get it to work on all different browsers. So Squarespace can handle all that for you. They have all kinds of beautiful themes. They handle all the SEO and analytics for you. Again, it's just a great way to kind of like take that off your plate, right? Let, let Squarespace handle the website. You know, building it yourself is a lot of time and effort. So when you're ready to start building that iOS developer portfolio or website, head over to squarespace.com to get started. And when you're actually ready to launch that website, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, moving on from Toggle here. And again, I apologize if that came off harsh. I'm happy to work with you and help you out, give you some more advice. Again, I want you to succeed. This isn't just me bashing people. I wanna help out. Um, but let's contrast that with Max, which I gave a sneak preview of here, right? So just the vibe and the feel you get right away, I get this nice, clean, organized, uh, you know, portfolio. And again, the surface level judgment. I see a portfolio like this, I immediately think, all right, Max has got his shit together. <laughs> sorry, to, you know, sorry for the for the language there, but that's immediately what I thought when I saw this. And I'm just being honest about like how I how I feel when I see these websites, right? Again, look how clean this is. A nice, I get a nice little blurb. Again, multiple screenshots. I don't have to like dig deep to see screenshots. Get a nice little blurb. I can see some technologies he worked on. Again, nice clean screenshots. Maybe I'd like to see a little bit more here. Um, but yeah. PDF builder screenshots. Again, just the vibe. The, and I hate, hate to sound like I'm gonna judge people based on their website, but I, I do, I do. Call me wrong, argue me in the comments. I genuinely believe like how you present yourself, how you present your work says a ton about your actual work. And of course, maybe that's wrong sometimes. It's probably not 100% accuracy, but I'm willing to bet it's right way more than it's wrong. So again, Max, great portfolio. Really loved how clean it was. You give me all the information. Similar to what I said about Chris Dapp, same theme here. This is why I want to kind of feature another one. Straight, to the point, clean. I get all the information I need right away. I'm not like digging around. So good stuff, Max. Next up, we have Sam McGarry here, iOS developer. Again, we get the picture, little blurb. This is kind of what I'm talking about, using the entire like first page just for this information. Again, I would... It's great information to have up front. Again, I would just kind of go back to how what Chris Dapps did, again, if I zoom out, right? How he had it just as like the top third, right? You can accomplish the same thing without, you know, wasting like so much space. Even when I zoom out of Sam's, right? He's basically using the whole page there, right? So good information, just make it smaller. And, and again, it's all about the UX of the person like using and trying to learn. You do a great job here of putting all your work, at least one screenshot of it up front and I can dig in deeper, right? Okay, recipe cache, let me dig in, cool. So, you know, I, I like the fact, even though I kind of just said that, you know, I don't like to click deeper and deeper, obviously you can't put all this information like on the homepage, right? It'd be too long. So not everything is an absolute rule. I think you did a good job here, back to your homepage, giving the preview of all your projects up front. So I can see like a broad overview of your work and I can dig into like what I wanna dig into. So again, digging in here, uh, small little information hierarchy things I would point out is I would put your images uh, at the top because honestly, like what I did at first and I like had to barely see the bottom part to scroll down is I saw this, okay, recipe cache, here's a little description, here's your technologies, images. And I like, I think I only scrolled down to like here and I thought that was it, I thought that was done. Whereas like all the meat is like down here. This is all the interesting stuff, right? That you put like things I would improve. Here's the process, here's the focal points. So what I would do is, Make your images maybe a little smaller, put them up, the, up at the top. That way people can easily scroll down and like this doesn't get missed. Okay, some notes on this. I love this. Focal points, there you go, great. The process, I would argue this is a little too long. You know, um, I don't know if like if somebody would like read through all this. Uh, are you familiar with the Mark Twain quote? Like it, I would have wrote a shorter letter, but I didn't have enough time. 
And that's basically saying that like, it takes time and effort to communicate something concise and quick. And I feel like this is, I haven't even read it, I'm not gonna lie to you. I feel like this might be like a lot of rambling. I think you could go a long way to maybe condense it down to like, you know, just uh, something like, as long as this, um, but get all the same points across, right? Work on it to be more concise. And then I like this, things I would uh, change or improve. I, I do wanna point out, um, let's go to the Tetris thing here, uh, the, the things I would change or improve, is I would, I would be more specific here, right? So like uh, add different game modes. Tell me the game modes, right? Integrate a better design. You know, tell me what you don't like about it. You know, just kind of expand on this a little more. And again, I'm not saying write a book, right? Because this is like pretty long that people aren't going to read. But maybe, I don't know, just in parentheses, like here's some ideas that I had. Uh, I just would have liked to see what you would have liked to do. And uh, more detail here, because again, I think that tells me more about you as a developer and somebody creating products. But overall, Sam, this is good. Again, make these processes shorter, just more concise. But uh, overall, you know, pretty good portfolio. I get all the information I need uh, up front, and then I can dig in uh, should I choose to. Finally, we have David Ravinsky, and I want to give a shout out to David. And, and this is kind of a good note, too, for people that are submitting portfolios. David has submitted every time for the months and months that I've been doing this. And to be honest with you, like the portfolio wasn't that great. And he's been watching these videos and he's been improving it over time. So I've kind of watched his portfolio evolve and to finally he submitted this. And I'm like, all right, David, now, now you're good. Now, now we get it. So this is like a hundred X better than what he had before. So I guess I want to use this to point out, like if you are submitting and maybe I'm not featuring it, um, keep using what I talk about in these videos or using the portfolios I share as inspiration to you know, improve yours and keep submitting. Like I love seeing kind of the evolution of how this goes. And David's a great uh, example here. This is probably his fifth or sixth time submitting and um, huge, huge improvement. So great job, David. So like I said, David's seen a lot of these videos, so he's adhering to this, you know, little picture of himself, little blurb, but it only takes up the top, you know, third of the screen. Again, I'm, I'm zoomed in, right? So like, it only takes up the top little bit. So great job there. Uh, showing the work. I think I would like to, I imagine this is probably what you're, you're most proud of. It's probably why you put it there, because uh, the other works are, are down here. I would maybe showcase all three screenshots up here instead of just one, even though, I, I don't know, again, it depends on like how proud of it you are. So yeah, I would use this space more efficiently. Again, about that UX topic I keep coming back to. And down here we got, you know, more about you. I like how you highlight that you're an instructor uh, at the university or helping out with other students. Uh, you're a community manager at Code with Chris. So it shows that you like to kind of give back to like the community, help out. Uh, I like that. Uh, and again, my, my apps, I would move this to the top. Again, basically replace, you know, you can maybe add some different design because these are pretty much just straight on screens. But um, I would maybe add it up here. Uh, again, this feels like a inefficient use of space. I believe I can like click on these, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I like this. Click on it. Uh, get a little blurb. Not sure if I would bury it behind a click because I know you're kind of like doing the animation that pops them up. So a lot of people will think you can click on that. But again, you'd be surprised. Anybody that has UX experience knows that you can't make assumptions when it comes to users, right? So I would bet there's a non-trivial percentage of users that would not click on this because they didn't know, right? Like I know to click on that. So I would maybe yank out these blurbs and kind of uh, have them uh, surface them up one level, right? Like don't bury them behind a click. Maybe show this app, show the blurb, show this app, show the blurb. Again, similar to, to Chris apps, right? What do we get with Chris apps? We got blurb, screenshots, blurb, screenshots, blurb, screenshots, right? So maybe similar to that style rather than burying it behind a click. Again, because it's, you know, there's some people that just aren't gonna know uh, to click here. Now down to your skills. I like the look and the simplicity and the minimalist of this. Like, I think you're on the right track. I think the information is lacking. Uh, and again, you wanna inform the person about you, right? So like your iOS development skills, Xcode, Firebase, storyboards, just flesh this out a little bit. Like for example, Firebase. I'm a developer, so I know what Firebase is, but if somebody's hiring you for consulting, contracting, whatever, they're not gonna know what Firebase is. So I would maybe say something like, you know, building backends for iOS app using Firebase. Just that little extra bit is more informative. You know, Java, tell me what you did in Java. I've built four apps in Java, ranging from games to to-do apps. Like, just expand on this, right? Just saying Java tells me nothing. Just saying Python tells me nothing. Like, are you a Python expert? Did you do one Python tutorial? Like, I don't know. So again, don't write a book. There's a fine line, right? There's a fine line between just saying, I know Java and writing a four paragraphs on why you know Java. So maybe just expand it into one sentence uh, about what you did to kind of sum that up to just give more information. 
And then I do like that you share your interests, right? TV shows, you have great taste in YouTube channels, horseback riding, swimming. I, I say this a lot, like I like learning more about the person that I'm looking to hire. And I've said this time and time again, right? Your developer skills, your technical skills, like that's great and all, but your soft skills, you as a human being is just as important, right? Cause I gotta work with you eight hours a day. So getting to know you, the human uh, is also a big plus. And I know not everybody agrees with that. A lot of people don't wanna share that kind of stuff on the internet, but again, if I'm hiring somebody, it's not make or break, but it's definitely a huge bonus to like get to know them a little bit and like what they're into. So David, again, overall uh, can improve your skills here, flesh that out, uh, unbury this behind a click, have that out there, and then you know use this space better. This feels inefficient, but good use of the hero. So, and David, huge improvement from what you had before. Love to see you keep striving to improve this and uh, glad to finally get you on the show. So hope you enjoyed this episode. I do this about once every couple months or so. So again, if you're interested in this, follow me on Twitter. I post calls for portfolios there. And again, if I didn't feature you, keep improving it, keep submitting. We'll get you in eventually. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the next one.